So with me today is Jeffrey A. Brown, writer and director of The Beach House. Thank you so much for being here today, Jeff. Thanks for having me. What was your pitch for The Beach House uh, back back in the early days? How did, how did you describe The Beach House? That goes back to one other... We went to the IFP, which is... Are you familiar with IFP? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sophia brought our film to IFP, which actually led us to the to Andrew Corkin, who led us to Tyler Davidson. So that IFP was a good, very good uh, thing for us. And that is really speed dating for pitching. So at okay. first, you know, it's like the first couple times our pitch was really kind of awkward. And then by the end of it, we got really good at it. We we're like, this is what the movie is. Uh, so now I can't remember what it is. Now having to remember. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's the, the you know, uh, should I say it? It's, it would... Yes. Yeah. Say, say what either what you remember it to be or what you would say now when somebody I mean, says, what is the beach house? What's the beach house about? The, the beach house is a science fiction horror film about a young couple struggling with the future of their relationship, uh, who discover unexpected guests at a, uh, at the titular beach house and things go downhill from there. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> That's good. That's good. Unearth has a, has a similar one. Yeah. yeah what's, what's the land pitch? is drilled. Things go back, go downhill from out. there. <laughs> yeah. Some doors shouldn't be opened. <laughs> That's right. Where did you have your first debut of the Beach House? Where was the first screening? Of it the beach it House? premiered at uh, uh, in Strasbourg at a European fantasy film festival in the fall of 2019. I think September of 2019 was our world premiere. So you got in there before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. We we had our kind of our brief festival run uh, in the fall of 2019. Uh, it was pretty, you know, we went around a little bit. Uh, I, I went to Strasbourg and I went to, to Sitges in Spain. Wow, I'm uh, so and jealous. Then, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was an interesting experience. That's another, Strasbourg was amazing. That was a great festival for us. Uh, Sitges is enormous. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure, as you know, it, and also, you know, it's kind of tough uh, when your movie's small and you don't have like big names. Sometimes in those big festivals, uh, the names really go a long way. And so we kind of, I felt in seat just wasn't quite the right fit for us. Whereas Strasbourg and like the Brooklyn uh, Horror Film Festival, which is where our US premiere was, those were mm -hmm. really great festivals for a film like ours. Now, at any of these early ones, did you have a sales agent or distributors on board then, or were you on your own totally? Uh, I was kind of kept out of a lot of that. Um, I did I did know that we had our, we're, our, we premiered on Shutter. We're still on Shutter right now, which you, yes. can, you, know, you can still see us on Shutter and, and iTunes and thank you. I knew Shutter was going to happen before our U.S. premiere, okay. um, but it was it was hush hush. You couldn't um, announce it. Couldn't announce it, but yeah, I I, I was. They kind of kept me out of the loop of a lot of that stuff. Uh, you mean as far know. as like the producers and stuff? They were handling the business side, or absolutely. Yeah, okay. I, I was not. Uh, I mean, my background is, as we were kind of saying beforehand, is in physical production. You know, my background is in locations and. One of the big, I'm sure, and I, are you guys self-distributing or what do you, what is No, we, we're, we held on to our theatrical and our mm -hmm. Blu-ray rights, which I'm curious to talk to you about because, um, well, that, that's a whole sidebar, which we'll get into. But uh, mm -hmm. we, we held on to those. Um, but otherwise, we had a sales agent international and one, a different one domestically. And, uh, you know, so we're kind of like different distributors all all over the place kind of yeah i amp i think amp represented us okay yeah in, in whatever that is again like i i i i i'm not this is not my forte like that was i i worked on you know over probably 100 productions in 20 years you sure have <laughs> getting into you know distribute sales agents and all that was really really foreign to me post was foreign to me as well okay where a lot of it was kind of falling on my shoulders and i was like just gonna be really upfront. i don't know what i'm doing i can figure it out but you know a lot of that stuff i didn't i, I kind of really felt my way through it but especially when it came to sales and any of that stuff i was really out of my element and you know, thankfully, our producers, we there were um, we, we had three major producing entities when we shot it. Uh, Low Spark, which is Tyler Davidson's company. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, Sophia Lynn was my producer, kind of. And then Andrew Corkin, who is uncorked. Those are the three kind of big 
uh, they're not even bit. I mean, they're the three producers, but they, Tyler and, and Andrew really do have a good track record with festivals and with distribution. You know, they've made movies that people could pay money to see, which I always feel is like you've won an indie film if, if you can do that. Um, mm-hmm. Cause it's not always the case. And then, um, so they, once we kind of got into that, once the film was ready for that, they really took it. And then uh, I don't know how, I don't know who got us with shutter, but that was like, that's a was, big one. Yeah, I mean that's nice. like the home the home for horror pretty much in the streamers, right? I mean, it's a good it, spot. It's a good spot. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I re- really uh, props props to you for sure. Thank that's you. um yeah, Shutter is one of the the few uh for genre films that um you know hand, handle it really well. So Yeah. It's a good it, it was and, yeah, and it was really uh, just kind of a, a lot of the stars lined up for us in that, you know, it was timing. Mm-hmm. We shot our film. I, you know, I wanted to ask you, like, how many how many days did you shoot? <laughs> when did you shoot it? And how was, okay, how was sure. the process? <laughs> so uh, ours was an 18 day shoot. So oh. six, six and six. What was what was yours? 18 days. Holy shit. Yeah. How about six, that? six and six. Did you do two <laughs> days off? No, we didn't. We just did Sundays, Sundays uh, off. Our assistant director would not do one day off. And we had a lot of day and night. So yeah. we couldn't go night on a Friday to a morning. So he re- he was really, we're doing two days off. And it was a non-union shoot, very small. So we could, you know, we could futz with the, the work days yeah. or the work weeks. Um, but if I had to do over again, I would not do six days. I think, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's intense, I, man, right? I felt that this <laughs> after lunch on the sixth day, my mm-hmm. brain was mush. Um, mm-hmm. I felt that our, cause when you're doing small movies, it's like, you know, the leads are in a lot of it. So Liana, I could tell she was very tired. And I think horror is, is something that I really learned is, is how physically exhausting it is on, on the talent. actors. Yeah. It, not just in terms of stunts, you know, they, they were doing a lot of stunts too, but it's, a, mm-hmm. you know, to emotionally, be scared for three weeks straight you know or uh, yeah. in our movie they were scared for like you know two weeks straight but like uh <laughs> it's very exhausting and to I maintain felt that, they, that emotional intensity right like it, yeah it would it would break her, it would break you and i probably <laughs> i mean it's uh, it's it's definitely something I, i've taken into consideration with with future projects just kind of seeing yeah. if the actress has a background with with horror or with stunts or with something that that can bring that level of intensity and maintain it because it is a physical that, that's a physical act you know it's not yeah. an intellectual yeah. and um that i noticed on the sixth day was just like productivity after lunch was just down the toilet yeah. everyone was just like when is this going to be over? when's today going to be over and i don't i don't like you know i i don't like that <laughs> no that's not good and we yeah. just so you know we had to fire our ad on the second second day um mm. so so we were flying a bit blind and had to improvise uh for the rest rest of the shoot basically so you know i that's i I'm, i don't like hearing you know i'm sorry to hear that yeah uh, it was it's not a good it, not a good choice it's it's a tough um one of the things with with beach house is that we, i really wanted it to be flexible and we were very our schedule was like kind of a joke not a, i don't mean that in a bad way i mean like you had a lot like, of nights right you had to have been doing I mean, there's a lot of night stuff yeah. in your film. <laughs> well, it's it's horror. Yeah. We gotta, we, you're gonna stay up all night. You feel you become like a vampire. It's like it's. I like that feeling of seeing the sunrise and it's quiet. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't know how many day. I think we went into nights on our third day and like kind of stayed there. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. You know, I don't know. I'm a night person, so I don't. I didn't really. That can be um, tough too, though. Like, I think psychologically, like ending your day as the sun's coming up can can be kind of weird in a in a whole other sense yeah you know well, for the cast I, and the crew I you were to, fine you i want they were fine they loved it <laughs> i wanted to go there though i wanted it you know i wanted the the movie you know the setting of it and the mood of it and the atmosphere was to be a little off so yeah i i'm just like thinking back now i'm thinking about the the movie about what scenes we were fighting daylight where the sun's coming up and there were some where we were really like scrambling to get those last shots before the sun just ruined it. You know, right. when did you shoot? When did you do your 18 days? We production? shot in the spring of 2017. Okay. We shot summer of 18. Yeah. Aug- August of 18. So you had a long post. 
we did. We, it was in a viewable stage, I think, by December or January of, of 2018. And then okay. our next year was very, very slow for a lot of reasons. Um, Do you want to get into any of those struggles? Well, <laughs> what, what's the, the, the old saying is you get it can either be cheap, good or fast. Mm -hmm. You only get two of the three. And so we went uh, cheap and good, I, I hope, as opposed yeah. to fast. Yeah, it just... Sure. Um, there are a lot of digital effects in our film, uh, okay. way more than you probably can tell. I mean, yeah, I which is good. That's good. Um, you saying that, uh, we get that a lot on Unearth too, which I like hearing, right? Like, Was there a I lot like, of dig yeah, digital Yeah, I mean, more than you would think. It's a lot of, like, um, enhancements and, like, hiding things, you mm -hmm. know? What, what about with you guys? Was it, uh, like, and some of ours was fixes too. Like, we, sometimes we would have a shot where like a curtain right right there in the background is like closed in, in one yeah. shot and then open in another and we're like, oh, what the hell? How did I, I mean, that? that was another thing that, you know, I've done on some of the, the locations work I've done, I've dealt with VFX units, which I think helped, mm -hmm. but the, we're dealing with budget levels that are much, much different where money, I, I always feel on low, I mean, I, I my, pedigree is in new york city which is its own entity in terms of filming but you, you know on a big budget movie the problem is always space and size it's like where do we put everybody where do, where does everybody go on indie it's always budget there's never it's it's no matter what the the dick the dictator is the is the money it's like everything is way too expensive and how can you do it for less and so we went in beach house wanting to be as practical as possible i still mm -hmm. love uh, I, I do think that the digitization of, of science fiction and horror is, is not helping necessarily. And I don't think that it's, I'm not a, a Luddite. I'm not, I'm not saying that like, oh, digital is bad. I, I think it's right. just another tool. It's another paint, you know, it's another paintbrush. It can be uh, a but crutch. I, I think it's a crutch. I, I think mm -hmm. it, I think it has to do with speed. I think that, you know, mm -hmm when we were shooting and I, I noticed in unearth you have a lot of like there's some kind of gooey close-up shots which i'm assuming you guys did without actors um <laughs> i think some of the practical stuff you know i love david cronenberg and, yeah. and you know he was really making his movies before digital was kind of taking over he was an innovator in digital with you know dead ringers and stuff where they started moving the line for split screens and right. i mean he's he's an innovator in so many ways but, you know, I think that what I noticed is shooting practical effects with actors mm -hmm. is like way slower than trying to do performance. Performance to me is lightning in a bottle. It's like you're trying to get them to get those little moments that they're not thinking about. And then then you go from like, let's do 20 setups in, in you know, six hours. Let's move as fast as we can, you know, do do just keep going, like grab the camera. Let's, you know, do that. And then you just go to like, Slow. and we're going to set up for two hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, that was and, a big learning thing, I would say, for, for Dorota and I as well, is that the setup time required on practical. And it was like our special effects supervisor would um, try to explain that to us of, you know, give as much time as you can for this stuff. And you, yeah. I didn't really realize that, yeah, that can mean like it can mean f like four hours, you know? <laughs> like Yeah. I mean, it's like stunts. It's like, you know, a, a stunt will take five hours to get everybody set up, get all the cars ready, get, and then you get like one or two goes at it. I mean, now they would have like 10 cameras going, Yeah, which is something else I would probably do. And we did it, we used, did you guys ever use two cameras? We um, did, yeah, yeah. We I, we didn't plan for it. Did you plan plan for using two from the get-go? definitely did. I mean, the okay. biggest one for us was the dinner scene, which is, it, mm -hmm. I was, for some reason, I was really scared of how long, it was like, the the final product is the the original dinner scene was much longer oh, okay and we shot like 10 pages in six hours with two cameras mm. and so we designed it to be that i watched um michael winterbottom is a is a yeah. director i really really like yeah, and so we watched too. the trip and okay. we, yeah. we watched how they covered a dinner scene with four people on that mm -hmm. i mean we, we pretty much ripped it off but i felt that i what the way i wanted it to feel and and i think that you know liana our lead in the beach house like her performance really kind of shows kind of what it, it like that was like what we were going for i mean all the actors do well in that but it yeah. was her in particular is like those close little moments that we could get with two cameras um but doing practical effects a lot of them we um you know as you said we had to clean them up with some digital stuff i, yeah. I think much much more than we had anticipated and that is comes to my 
Ditto. inexperience a little bit with that you know i, mm-hmm. I it, it ultimately as you know is like the director it's all on you you know it, mm-hmm. it all it all in the end it's you it's your name on it and all that and so i think that you know that we were a little bit optimistic um and, and i think production is not optimistic it's pragmatic so i'm like <laughs> yeah. I, w- I was a little bit like yeah this will work out it'll work out right of course because you have to you have to be that guy too right like yeah i am not a positive you can't person. be like Oh my God, everything's fucking up. We're, we're screwed. Well, I mean, somebody's got to, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not positive in that. I'm usually not optimistic, but I think we were really hoping that some things would work out better than they did. That said, after going mm. through the process of shooting and seeing what we could do in post and how far our money could go, which was not far in yeah. terms of digital effects, uh, I would have, there's definitely simple, I don't see simple solutions. And so there's a lot of things I would have done there's definitely a simple solution to what we wound up doing that we didn't do gotcha. and I, to do it over again, sure. knowing what the digital, what costs money digitally, you know, like rotoscoping and fog is very mm. expensive. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And you had a lot of like, yeah, you had fire, you had fog, you had all, all kinds of stuff going on there. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I'm thinking was, like just the end, you know, with the flat, the flashing uh, orange light there. Yeah. You had tons, tons of that going. Yeah. You had tons had, of like, elements. Eight, eight smoke machines where they would just you run around, turn them all on, and we would roll. And then wind was a big problem. Like we mm-hmm. shot in Cape Cod, and it's very windy. And so, aspiring filmmakers, if you're watching, don't shoot fog when it's windy. It's like <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh, it, but if it was under three miles an hour, you couldn't do any fog. Which, wow. you know, again, it's like maybe in retrospect, finding a garage that was big enough that we could just do the fog and like open you know contain it in a way there are some fog shots that i think worked really well where we could contain it but you know the exterior ones were really tough and so that was kind of going back what we were saying about with the ad our ad designed the script to be to shoot to be very flexible so that it wasn't just rain you know we couldn't shoot in the rain but also our movie was supposed to be sunny and we got four days of sun out of like, you know, out of the whole run of it. So it's like, if it was sunny, we got to go shoot the beach. Right. Scenes. If it's not windy, we got to shoot the fog scenes. And cool. so we had to, and then it's rainy and all this other shit all the time. You had to adapt so, and you only have three weeks. Yeah. It, but we did it. We, yeah, we were, that was, it was like every night I'd, I'd get home and, and that was when I would know what we were shooting the next day. I mean, you know, our parameter and also we weren't totally cast when we started shooting. So oh, it was okay. exciting. Oh, really? <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Did you have your tough. did you have your two leads? We had the two leads. Okay. Uh yeah. and then we we our adults came. Okay. I think, I think they came when we had started shooting already. So Well, that was... kind of works cuz you have a little buffer there and there's there's some I mean there's I don't want to yeah. spoil the plot, but there's uh there's parts that you could shoot out, I I would imagine, with your two leads, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Until you had... I mean, I wanted to shoot in order as much as possible, and that went out the window on day three. <laughs> it was yeah. like, hey, we're shooting that scene that's at the end of the movie now. Oh. <laughs> but, I mean, it's not quite as bad as, uh, what is it, an eraser head where they he opens a door and walks through it two years uh, later. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't <laughs> yeah, that bad, right. but... It, you know, that was, I think some of the things I'm re- I'm most proud of with the movie are the stuff that people would never notice mm-hmm. is like, there are definitely intercut shots that were shot weeks apart, sometimes months apart. Wow. We didn't do any, we did like one day of pickups after the shoot okay. that was like in October. So yeah, we did some I, stuff without actors, like, you know, the drone stuff and the oh, car, yeah. car driving down at the end and all that was like weeks later. Yeah. I, I feel like that's something that and I went to film school. I don't know what you're, you know, I, I think that that's, that's a whole other conversation, but like the pickup day of inserts without actors for a low budget film is mm-hmm. like, you gotta do it. Like that was, yeah. we went back, the DP and I went to Cape Cod in, I think two months after we'd finished when we had, we started getting our assembly together. Then we shot in my apartment a lot. There's a oh, okay. lot of footage that was, done in my apartment oh really like you bed, never bedroom know. stuff the bedrooms if, or... if there's anything without an actor in it it's probably from my apartment <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just like wow. inserts of sinks it was oh, okay. like hands you know my hand mm. is in the movie a lot um <laughs> but that kind of came from our editor who is really aaron crozier who's very you know pretty experienced in he does a lot of documentaries as well as 
as horror and uh he would just be like hey you need to we need another shot here and they'd be like <laughs> really and he's like yeah but that's something i think i think that's also experience is just like kind yeah. of telling you what is you know the the punctuation or the rhythm of the scene it's like well it's going to go to a close-up of a door shutting and it's like oh well, we need we need that i didn't know you know i wasn't thinking about that i was thinking sure. I think broad, I mean, there's a lot that the, our rough cut of the movie was like almost three hours long. It was like, Ooh. yeah, it was, wow. it was, that was a drink at night. I was like, Oh, how my long geez. was your, how long was your script? Cause you, you wrote pages. too. Okay. Yeah. So. It, the, the, it was 98 Oh, so pages. you had it like, it was a really slow burn, I would assume then, right? Slow and low is the tempo. That's okay. how, that was, it's like, <laughs> if you think you're going too fast, you are go slower. Uh -huh. And so, um, yeah, our rough cut was, I think, two hours and 45 minutes, the assembly of everything. Before we even started getting inserts and, and kind of yeah. molding the movie, it was every line of dialogue was like, that was two hours and 45 minutes. Wow, wow. And I, the editor was like, hey, you know, he's saying the same thing three different ways, two uh -huh. are going. And I was like, oh, really? That's so poetic <laughs> and nice. And I was like, nope, it's going. Uh, how long was your rough cut or what was your script? How long was your script? Our script was, I'm going to say, 96, and then we, like, we had our locations fell through, like, uh, boat, but, like, you know, because our situation, we needed two neighboring farms, right? And we wanted to mm -hmm. show them in those shots and show the isolation, so you had to, for us, we had to find two locations at once um so i i had that and then they fell through like about man i want to say like a month ahead of production which nice. like made me shit my pants right uh, location sucks on the low budget <laughs> round doesn't it yeah what? you you know more than more than anybody Ooh, it's I, tough. Ne I needed a uh before directing jeff brown uh definitely but then then um well my I'll boss. always advise. What, yeah, what yeah go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, Which, no, no, no. No, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, then my, my boss from my day job uh, said, well, you know, there's two farmhouses right next to my house. And I was like, all right, let's go out there. And actually, that increased the scale, too, because the two farmhouses we had originally were really small, really mm -hmm. small productions. And this kind of, like, gave us the space we needed to, like, have that gas well site there and... And then we added into the story because then the highway really is in the background of, of the one house and added that into the storyline. And so it was it ended up like being a blessing, actually, because we had more space, more room. And yeah. otherwise we would have been like on top of each other in the other houses. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Locations is horrible. It, I mean, it's <laughs> it's a. Uh, um it's an art. I mean, it's some of those things do, you know, I, I do feel that sometimes you lose one to, to, you know, you, 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 it, it helps. Like sometimes that random thing can really benefit, you know? Yeah. Um, we, when did we, I, I mean. Yeah. Did we, you write we, this with your locations in mind? I was going to ask you that. Were you familiar with uh, this area? No, I was vaguely familiar with it, like a dream. I didn't like grow up going there, but I'd been there two or three times before randomly i had a uh i mean the whole thing kind of comes around a, a date that went awry for me so oh no shit um, so that's the origin that's where it starts well I, I think the origin really comes from like the the basic idea of it was which was four people in one house was from years and years and years ago when i was younger my college roommate and i were on the jersey shore and we were at a, at a beach house and we said something about how these beach houses were all really great locations because a lot of them are unrenovated. A lot of them are pretty big. And we're like, mm -hmm. you know, why don't they ever, why don't they ever set a movie at a, uh -huh. at a beach house? And so that was like, that was the idea of it. And then I, I think I wrote a couple versions of it, like, I mean, a long time ago and they were not good. And it was like more <laughs> of a psychological, uh, there was no supernatural element, no science fiction -y at all. At that point, I was just really trying to get, you know, two couples running around chasing each other with knives and it just didn't work. It was, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't quite a writer yet. And gotcha. It was just, so then I put it away and then it, how long it, ago do you think what you're, you were this version, like that version of the story before you picked it back up again, I guess is what I'm curious. I'd huh. say 2004. 2003. Oh, wow. So I have them. I, have the, I can't read them though. I'm afraid to read them, but like 10 years or something before you picked it back up. Oh just, yeah. 
Wow. Oh yeah. And well then what happened was is that our producer Sophia Lin was a friend of mine uh socially and we worked together. I location managed a couple of movies for her and we had we had friends in common and all that. And she was having a, a tough time on a well, we were having a drink and discussing making independent movies and sometimes you know sometimes people in the film industry go figure are not real nice and so she was having trouble on something yeah and so I and bet. so i said Let, let's let's make you know let's make a one you know one of my scripts let's do that and she's like oh okay and, and she was like yeah let's do it and so I, then i was like oh man which one and so then i i looked at the at the beach house again and i was, I was like well this all and this is i'd say 2011 2012 okay. yeah and so I did a, a rewrite of it to try to get, and that's when the kind of cosmic horror, that's what I was reading at the time. Uh -huh. And that kind of parlayed into like nonfiction science, which I still read. And, and those were the ones that really influenced kind of the, what became the eco horror yeah. more so uh, than, than much else when I just started reading that because uh, there's a kinship between cosmic horror, which is like, you know, Lovecraft is the standard bearer of cosmic horror. Right. But um, some of the more obscure things, but there's really a kinship from Lovecraft and his, the people who influenced Lovecraft really. And then uh, um, like William Hope Hodgson, not to get too literary nerdy, but like. Not familiar, but they're, I'll, they're, I'll have to look him up. Well, he's, you know, he's writing in the 1890s or 19, 1900s, mm -hmm. kind of when science and, and uh, Darwinism was kind of getting into, you know, science and science fiction you know a mm -hmm. lot of science fiction as we know it didn't it i mean it's a newer genre it didn't really right. exist you know 150 years ago there's always precedents you know i feel that you know dante's inferno and the bible are horror those are horror stories for They're sure with people being punished you know yeah. for their sins yeah. <laughs> you know so I, I think horror is there's an element of that you know in halloween is you, you have sex and you get punished for right. it which is a reaction to you know free love and whatever so in this, did you, cause you had, it sounds like you had kind of a straight up either like a, um, like a slasher or a invasion or something maybe was your original concept with this. Did you, you know, how much of it was considering audience and, you know, kind of the timeliness of eco horror coming back up or is that all coincidental? Cinema Activist is produced by Lion's Den Productions. Hosted by John C. Lyons. Music by Tony Gray. Support the efforts of Lion's Den Productions by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Lion's Den Productions. Thank you for listening. We'll be back soon.